Hi and welcome to section 5, Microsoft Access Building Meaningful Relationships, RDBMS. Understanding and setting primary and secondary keys. In this video I'll be covering the following. What primary and secondary keys are? Why bother with any key at all? How to set the primary and secondary keys in a table? What the connection with the index property is about when setting keys? And introducing to the indexes window for a table understanding the pros and cons. Let's get started. So far we have covered the main Microsoft Access objects including tables, queries, forms and reports. Though I have mentioned a little about the primary keys and shown joined tables in some of the examples from other videos, this section starts to go into more detail and explains the part of Access in isolation so you fully understand the strength and the power of Microsoft Access. So what are primary and secondary keys? A primary key is the key field that contains a unique value in a table. It acts as the responsible field for the table when joining with other tables. Most tables should really have a primary key, the ID field, as you want to capture a unique ID reference for a record. A primary key cannot be left blank, which is known as not null. It's therefore a mandatory field and forces this validation. The auto number data type is the ideal candidate for primary keys, as this data type is self generated by access. Secondary keys can also be set for a field, but they contain duplicate values instead, which is the main difference to primary keys being unique values only. It's used to connect with the primary key field from another table, as some fields may need to store duplicate IDs to match. Therefore, a quick summary of the two key values used are primary key equals no duplicates, secondary key equals duplicates OK. Why bother with any key at all? You can use just Microsoft Access and neglect to use any type of key, but this can have issues as the database volume grows over time. The benefits of using a key are primary keys will maintain unique data values validating the record's integrity. All keys will actually speed up the queries, forms and reports when they are being executed. Primary keys are more important than secondary keys which are deemed optional. However, secondary keys are also used for non-related joins with other fields too, as a quick way to mark a field for special use. As you run queries which drives the forms and reports, it will prioritise fields with set with keys when it's being executed. No keys? Without them, the larger the database volume is, the slower your database will be over time. Keys will help keep the management of larger volumes of data. So, if joining tables or queries together, as would be the case for any typical access database, then use keys. Now that we know the reason why we use access keys, let's go and set these keys up in our tables. I'm going to open the customers table in design view. This is where we have potential fields that should be set with a key of some type. If you have identified a field to be the primary key for a table, the easiest way to set one field as the primary key is as follows. Select the row or anywhere in the row for the field in question. I'm going to set the customer ID field. Click the primary key icon under the design tab here. Notice the key symbol appears to the immediate left of the field selected. As well as the index property in the lower half has also changed with the value of no to yes no duplicates. If I were to run the table now it will prompt me to save the changes first which I will confirm and the key is now enforced. Be careful though. If you set the primary key with records already stored it will validate this before it can be applied which is why this would normally be carried out before any data is added to a table, namely a new table. Remember, you cannot have duplicate values for a primary key field, and it will prevent you from assigning one if it finds any if it runs the table. Back in design view for this table, and to remove a primary key, simply click the same icon again. It toggles on and off. The index property in the lower half will also revert to the value of no once again. You can also set this icon across two or more fields by selecting the multiple rows first 
using the control key held down from the keyboard like so. Clicking the primary key icon again, notice a key icon appearing to all the selected rows in the same way. However, the indexed property is still set to the values of no across all the selected fields. This is because the system doesn't actually know which field should be the primary key and needs your intervention here. So the question you may be asking right now is, why have a key symbol for all the selected fields when only one should be the primary key? And the icon really implies this. The answer is that the keys actually also applies to secondary keys too, though it doesn't say so. Therefore, you now really need to apply each field's indexed property, which will make it either a primary key or a secondary key, or if it's left as no, have no key, even though there's a symbol set for it. In fact, the key symbol's only for show, and it's actually the index property that really matters here. You could even leave this key symbol out altogether. I'm leaving it on for information, but we'll now set the index property as follows. Customer ID, yes, no duplicates, which will validate this when I next run the table making this the primary key as previously demonstrated. I've chosen the company name field to equal yes duplicates OK because I've decided and identified this field could be a key field for most of my queries later on, which will speed up the querying when using this field as it may often be used when applying criteria. It's another reason why a secondary key is set for a field in a table and not just a link with other fields from other tables. Also, the city, postal code and country fields will also use the same index value too. Yes, duplicates OK. The country field is included here because it will eventually link to a table called countries by its unique primary key, which I will set up in just a moment. Run the table and save the changes, and then close the table. Next, opening the countries table in design view, I'm going to set the first field and set this as the primary key. Running the table and saving the change along the way, applying the validation, and if you can see the list of all countries, then it's ready. The country ID field will link with the customs tables country field, which is now a secondary key. And that will speed up the connection when both tables are called together in a query or other objects. You may have noticed this field is an incrementing number that is being linked to the customer's table country field. When in fact this field looks like a text value when I view the country field here. In its design for the selected field country, you'll see the data type is also set as a number, though it appears as text. This is because under the lookup tab here, it uses an internal query, an SQL statement, binding the first column, the country ID field, from the countries table like so. The reason you just see the text is because the second column, the column with property is set as follows, 0 centimeters, 3 centimeters, 0 centimeters, hiding columns 1 and 3, and it still holds the unique value, its ID number, because the property bound column is set as 1. Let's take a look at the employees table and continue to set fields here. The employee ID as the primary key, last name and birth date fields as the secondary key. I have decided these fields are going to be more often used when applying some sort of criteria and sorting in a query later on too. It's purely optional and very subjective. Now run and save the table to verify the indexes have been correctly set. I'm going to also set two more tables now, the orders table next, and then finish off with the order details table. With the orders table, the following fields are set, order ID as the primary key, the customer ID and employee ID fields as the secondary keys, as they will contain duplicate values and link to their respective tables in due course. The other fields, order date and order amount fields, will be set as secondary keys too, but not going to be linked anywhere and just as a marker for key fields in my future queries when applying criteria and sorting as well. Opening the order details table and the only two fields to set are the order ID and the product ID as secondary keys only. 
This is because they both will contain duplicate values and there is actually no unique value ID for this table as it will sit in between the orders table and the products table which will have their own unique identifiers. With this table it's storing the duplicate values here hence being secondary keys only. You don't always need to have a primary key field in a table unless you want one and it has a purpose. Running and save the table to verify the indexes once again. To finish off, there is an indexes dialog box that pops up via the indexes icon located on the design tab here. This just reveals the summary indexing applied to the table with the ability to refine it further. However, because I have already applied indexing to this table, be careful that any changes here will reset and remove key symbols back in the design view of the table. This is just another way to set indexes for convenience. It's a personal choice. You may want to note though that this is not as intuitive or as user friendly. The lower half of the screen is a little misleading too. There are three properties which may appear to be incorrectly set, but in fact is correctly set. The main row is the one with the primary key which is identified as the customer ID and is primary is yes. There is no advantage to change the index column name here, it's just the label. The field name column is the important one. You can also change the sort order in the third column but again this is left normally for your queries. Finally, it's worth pointing out that a table can set up to 10 fields with some sort of index which should be more than enough. The reason for this is that even though setting indexes for fields speeds up your queries, forms and reports, it actually slows down the general application's performance of Microsoft Access and there needs to be a balance between running large volume of data for reporting versus the overall performance of your computer's memory. It's a technical consideration, but keep the fields that really need to be indexed to a minimum. To summarise then, you now know more about what the primary and secondary keys are have covered the reasons why we use keys at all. Know where to set the primary and secondary keys in a table. Reviewed the connection with the index property when setting keys and introduced you to the indexes window for a table understanding the pros and cons.